let's welcome in our guest uh, live from Seattle. It's uh, Delegate Clay Riley who is joining us this morning. Clay, thanks so much for being with us. I appreciate your loyalty to Senator Barrett that you would wake up at 5 a.m. and do this. Uh, good morning, Rob. Yeah, no, actually, it was because John Doyle's on the on the program. I like him a little bit better than Jason. So. I'm going to let your caucus know that. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no, glad to be with you. You are out in, on the West Coast as part of a delegation of local officials, uh, Clay. I was told that there were as many as 43 people from West Virginia who'd made the trip out to Seattle. Is that accurate? I don't think it was that many. I think the number was around 30 okay. uh, with a cross section of, uh, you know, you had some private industry people out here. You had some, some government officials, you had university officials, but it was, I think it was around 30, Rob, to be more accurate. Uh, tell me what uh, the purpose of this mission is and who put it together and how did you get to become a part of it? Well, you know, it's, um, it, that's a great question. So Choose West Virginia really, it kind of came about as an idea, you know, that West Virginia is really in a strategic position right now. And it's kind of a strategic intersection of where a lot of our challenges, but assets specific or what used to be challenged and are now assets are really kind of solutions to what some of the world is, is really looking for. You know, the, the theory that the urban, the rural is the new urban, and people are wanting to live in different locations. And what we recognize is that we really have a great story, but we're not great. We haven't been great storyteller. And so it was an idea, I believe, of um, Speaker Hanshaw, President Blair, uh, President Bla uh, Marshall President Brad Smith, and WVU President Gordon Gee to where they really wanted to be able to tell our story so that people began to, you know, consider West Virginia because we've made a lot of progress over the past six to eight years, the past decade of really putting policies in place. And, you know, we want people to look to locate and choose West Virginia. What kind of meetings have you had so far, Clay? So we've, we've met with a, a lot of different companies, whether they're, they're small entrepreneurial companies to large companies like Amazon, you know, so one of the key components when you look at the area out here in Seattle, you have a lot of tech companies. So whether it's Amazon, whether it's Microsoft, you have major players in the industry and they're building these data centers all over the place. And, you know, I think West Virginia is a great place for that. So we've, we've tried to leverage, you know, connections that we have and relationships that we have so that we can try to position one of those in the state of West Virginia. Jason. Good morning, Clay. And <clears throat> you mentioned um, being a better, West Virginia being a better, better storyteller. And so ha my question is, how have you, how has West Virginia been received or the West Virginia delegation been received in Seattle? And then also you, you mentioned changes in the past six to eight years. Uh, are, are the folks in, in Seattle and the companies you're visiting with, are they aware of some of these changes and, and what specifically uh, are, is, is, what specific changes are standing out to them? You know, um, it's a great question. Actually, we, it's, we've been received unbelievably well. And a lot of the things that we have done, and, and I can give a few examples, are really beginning to position us ahead of people. Uh, you know, two policies that I can think of that I know I've heard of this week. Uh, first is the single sales factor. So bringing our tax policy more in line or even in an accelerated place, um, whether it's a sales use tax for data, et cetera, um, those tax policies to make it um, fair, more fair, more competitive state uh, nationally and actually worldwide, that was one policy that, that was specifically mentioned. The other one is the site readiness. You know, so often there's they want to locate companies and places, but they, it takes time. You have due diligence. So the fact that we're starting to move forward with sites that you're not out building the sites, but you are doing the due diligence, the environmental, making sure that um, you know you know what infrastructure is located. The fact that we can move at the speed of business and we're more nimble has been um, <clears throat> really uh, positive. The other thing, I, when, as I said, we were really well received 
everywhere we have gone, we have got the response that this is so unique. In a, in a time where political division is really strong across nationally, you have leaders from both parties, Democrat, Republican. You have members from the House, the Senate. You have universities, whether it's West Virginia University, Marshall University, West Virginia State. So everyone pulling in the same direction and working to improve the state. And, and when we roll in with all of those different perspectives, but singing in a unified voice, it's really made a significant impact. You mentioned, you mentioned the uh, the fact that, that both Gort Gee and, and Brad Smith are, are attending. Um, obviously, everyone knows about Brad Smith's leadership at Intel. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what he brings to the table and, and the doors that he's able to open uh, uh as as the delegation uh, travels to Seattle, and, and, and I know some of us have gone to, to other meetings as well. Yeah, so when you have relations with peop- relationships with people, it, it does help get the opportunity to kind of tell the story. And so um, President Smith, President Yee have been very active in, in utilizing the alumni relationships, personal relationships, to get us the opportunity to tell the story. And so it's made a significant impact. I mean, you just don't – get into Amazon. You just don't get into Microsoft all the time. You just don't get to meet with. Uh, last year, there was a similar trip to Silicon Valley. And, you know, you had 30 CEOs from tech companies who were there wanting to, you know, hear the story of West Virginia. So it's definitely, those relationships have definitely opened up some doors that I don't think were previously there. You mentioned um, Choose West Virginia and and the overall goal of these trips. Uh, Is there a more immediate goal uh, with this trip? Well, yeah. I mean, companies are looking to to expand. They're looking to um, locate. You know, one company that we met with is currently, you know, undergoing expansion of one of their businesses. So I I obviously can't mention them for, for for that reason. But, you know, the fact that we were able to talk about how they're looking to, you know, how they're looking to expand their company, the fact that we're within 60% of the population within an eight hours drive, the logistics of being able to move throughout West Virginia to whether it's South to towards North Carolina, Florida, we're, our cost of living is 12% cheaper, so especially over in the Eastern Panhandle, you guys know your access into um, the D.C. market. So that that's really just kind of been the part of the themes and part of the questions. John Doyle. Clay, how you doing? Good, Mr. Doyle. How are you? Splendid. Uh, first, first, I want to thank you for your tireless and invaluable work getting the PFAS protection bill passed in this last session of the legislature. Uh, that was really oh, important, and I, and I very much appreciate it. Um, when did you folks get to Seattle? Uh, so traveled. I traveled out, I guess, Sunday. Yeah, so, I mean, so it's a long, long flight, four and a half hours. So I got there Sunday, and we're wrapping up. Uh, most of the flights are back today uh, you you all didn't happen to go to any of the baseball games while you were out there did you no but i tell you what you gotta love when the mariners win and they break out into country roads that's I mean, what i was going to tell you about just, i yeah they, i we just infuse it john yeah no i'm a nationals fan and the nationals played there the last three days and i saw all the games and particularly when clay kellenick comes to bat that's his walk-up song and the crowd starts singing it and several times what would happen is they'd cut the organ music off and the crowd would keep singing and and the home plate umpire would have to wave his hands and tell the crowd to shut up so the pitcher could throw the ball. You know, it's funny because when we walked into one of our meetings, they had it up on the big on the big video screen playing this Mariners fan singing Country Road. So they said West Virginia is everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, so – um, what what is the what is the name of your delegation or your trip or or whatever is it called? I've been I've been trying to listen for that and I haven't heard you or anybody say that. Choose West Virginia. Okay. Uh, we want people to simply 
choo- consider choosing West Virginia, what, lo- choosing to live there, choosing to locate their business there. And, you know, the fact is, John, just a lot of people don't think about us. It's not we've not been well received. I mean, we've been superbly received. It's just when they go to think about where do I want my employees to live with remote work, we want them to think about, hey, consider West Virginia. Same thing with their business. So, yes, that's what it's called. No, I agree with you. There is uh, – and maybe it's the name. Maybe it's the fact that we're not not very large, but – uh, we do tend to be one of the states that people forget about. So you have to kind of worm your way into the conversation. Oh, you're exactly right. You know, with 1.8 million people, um, we're big enough that we have every problem that everywhere else has. <laughs> However, we're small enough and nimble enough that we can make decisions to change quickly. So if there's a, you know, we were the one of the first states in the company to pass this fintech uh, financial technology sandbox, and that has allowed that banking industry to begin to test things in sandbox within our state that's creating jobs. And you see that with some of the arts entrepreneur schools uh, with WVU up in the innovation center. And so things like that where we hear of problems and opportunities. You know, we can then we we hear problems. We can then make them an opportunity by change. You know, looking at how we can do things to accelerate. You know, those those entrepreneurs. Well, yeah, Clay Riley is our guest here on the program. Clay, I want to touch uh, what uh, on what John brought up a little earlier, and what you just mentioned too, and that is that you're. It's not that you're not being well received, and it's not that West Virginia is being disqualified. It's that West Virginia is just not in the conversation as a place to consider. As one of the reports that I read, and one of the things that has struck me about the rest of this country is that, uh, unfortunately, too much of it doesn't think of West Virginia as a state. It, they think it's Western Virginia as part of Virginia, like Northern Virginia as part of Virginia. And some of these people are very educated uh, as well. I'm, I'm talking about people that have degrees in education and such who actually think it's Western Virginia as opposed to the state of West Virginia. So as a, as a practical matter, other than going and visiting and delivering the, the word of mouth that way, how do you get the word of mouth, uh, how do you get the word out to the rest of the business world in this country and internationally that this is its own state capable of making great business deals for people? Well, I think you've seen that <clears throat> occur over the past couple of years through some specific efforts of the tourism depart- department. Secretary Chelsea Ruby and and the legislature have agreed that, you know, we need to tell our story better. So they they have had increased funding for marketing over the past number of years. They actually purchased the rights to use country roads. And you've seen a big marketing initiative to, if you remember the old Visit Michigan um, kind of marketing tourism, what they found was when people went They ended up staying, and they ended up coming back. And so you've seen our marketing, our tourism dollars increase in revenue, not only on the spend side, but we've seen a return on that investment of about eight to one. And then what happens is people realize, hey, wow, you know, I can visit here, but you know, I can live here too. And so we've we've we that's one area. I think the Ascend program from the Wing to Wing Foundation that Brad Smith started has been a good positive influence um you know so they're bringing in small cohorts but it's really there's been other people who have moved here even though they've not been part of that cohort so those are some of the ways i I think you just got to continue to put your nose to the grindstone rob and, and and tell the story through marketing and relationships and just doing good things yeah, uh, Clay, uh, it's it's interesting. You mentioned tourism. West Virginia Tourism is this year sponsoring the Washington Nationals, and on on these ball games these last three days, it was interesting. Even the Nationals announcers were remarking that they were hearing "Take Me Home, Country Roads" at least once every inning, <laughs> uh, e- either from the commercials that uh, that that that, this, uh, that that Mass and the Mid Atlantic Sports Network was using or the crowds out there in, in, in Seattle. Uh, New Mexico has the same problem with the name. 
One thing they have that we don't uh, is the fact that they do have a large city. And I do think that is partly the reason that you have to kind of raise your hand and say, hey, you know, uh, uh, I want to get in this conversation, too. Yeah, we 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 don't have a large city. You're right, John. And, and you were talking about the Nationals. I was at a uh, ping. I was watching a Penguins game. Not Penguins. Um, yeah, it was the Penguins, and they were playing uh, Detroit. And and what the tourism department has done is they had that. They've used data to be able to say where is our most you know likely inbound people you know tourists coming from. And so they've really started to do the marketing in other areas in a different way. And so huge credit to uh, Secretary Ruby. And <clears throat> we don't have that large city, but we have so much more to offer. You know, when people can, can you know, climb the highest uh, rock face east of, east of the Rockies, I mean, that's, that's impressive. You can go to Seneca Rocks. We have the greatest – we have more whitewater rafting and rest miles of whitewater rafting in West Virginia than anywhere else other than Australia. We have some of the best whitewater in the world. And so when people begin to actually see that they can work and live where they want to, that's, that's where you really get that synergy. Jason. Clay, you mentioned West Virginia being nimble enough and the legislature moving quickly enough to, to make change to, to accommodate large companies coming to West Virginia. Uh, and have obviously we have Nucor, P&G, Berkshire Hathaway, Forum Energy. Uh, has, has the message that West Virginia is open for business and, and willing to um, you know, willing to be a partner uh, with some of these businesses that come to West Virginia, has that message been delivered, and, and how has that been received uh, on your trip this time? I think it's being. I think it has been delivered, and I think it is being delivered. And it's more than. And I do want to make one point. It is more than just big companies. Sure. You know, when you can get some of these small companies to come in and co-locate, you really begin to build a nice hub. So if you look at the aviation industry right now, I mean, we have just a significant amount of aviation companies, whether it's FCX out of Morgantown, really small company, but they do huge amount of work across with Navy, with the U.S. Navy, with Boeing, or it's, you know, precision cast parts down there in the BHE renewable project, which is huge for titanium production. Um, so yeah, it's been received, Jason, and and I think it's gonna. You know, you, we have to continue to tell that story. It's you, you got to tell them, tell them, and then tell them again. But it, it's been well received, and I think it's been delivered, and we're going to continue to do it. I hope. Clay, how important will this infrastructure bill delivering 1.2 billion dollars for the expansion of broadband in West Virginia be to attracting tech companies like the kind you were trying to get uh, this week in Seattle? Well, I think it's you know it, it is it is it is it was an awesome timing. <laughs> I can tell you the story. We were actually sitting at Amazon in their executive briefing room, talking about connectivity when uh, Secretary Carmichael got the call that that was going to be the announcement. You know, we were not expecting that large of an announcement. I think we were kind of hoping for somewhere between six and eight hundred million, and we got the largest allocation per capita of anyone in the country and we it's because we had our programs up and running we you know jason uh, senator barrett was talking about you know making sure that we're putting these things into place so that when they come about we can you know be nimble enough to to execute them um the fact that we had those programs up and running we were the first in the country to do that positioned us really well and so when they talked about that $1.2 billion, it, there was literally a round of applause. I mean, the, the, the Amazon people just broke out and started cl clapping. And so it was very well received and very well topped. And, and, Clay, it's also because we finally came up with an accurate map that showed how many more places in West Virginia didn't have broadband than was the case with the previous maps. Yeah, and, and we were fighting the FCC from the beginning on that, John. You're correct. And, you know, I think, you know, to our congressional leaders, Senator Capito, Senator Manchin, uh, our, our, our 
congressional delegation really fought that with the FCC and the fact that the Office of Broadband began working on making sure that we do have an accurate map even before they were going – they announced they were going to update the maps made a big difference. You're correct. I know, uh, obviously, Capito and Manchin voted for that infrastructure bill. Mooney voted against it, if I recall, but I don't know how Carol Miller voted on She that. voted no as well. She voted no as well? Yeah. No. It, that's interesting, uh, the way that broke down, because obviously the s state really needed those funds to accomplish what you guys are trying to accomplish out in Seattle. Is there anything missing from the tax policy of the state right now, Clay, Jason, or John, that would help seal the deal on some of these uh, proposals you folks are making this week to try to bring more business to West Virginia. Clay, you go first. Yeah, yeah so um, there, there, were, there are a few things that I think we're going to look at. Um, but again, it's there to look – there are. But we the, – as we talked earlier, there's some things that specifically we have done. You know, we were told for um, – based upon some internal uh, – matrix i guess you could say ranking that we were in the top 10 of their tax policy for for this company of where to locate you know you see some of the 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 rankings that were 22nd in in tax policy from the tax foundation i believe but they said for their specific business that that we're in the top 10 and there are there was one thing that they mentioned but um you know so i think we'll probably consider Continue. They did talk about the income tax reduction for their people and their employees, you know, making sure that there's more money back in their pocket. They thought that was a good thing. Take what you need, but don't take more than you have to. So I think we'll probably look at some things, but there was nothing that they said, hey, you have to do this. You've already done the heavy lifting is what they told us. Jason? Well, I think the, the obvious answer is that we could have done a better job with the equipment and inventory tax on large for, for business and, and certainly the legislature has has done what we're able to do uh, giving the outcome of amendment two uh, for businesses that have assets uh, less than a million dollars uh, as it relates to personal property they get that refunded that's obviously a little convoluted uh, it would have been a lot easier if we could have just uh, you know eliminated the tax uh, which I think would have appealed to business uh, but but to Clay's point about the personal income tax reduction, you know, I, I fully expect, you know, we continue to um, uh, meet some of the uh, benchmarks that are in place so that that income tax does uh, those triggers so that it does continue to go down. And, and the businesses look at it, look at that and say, you know, our people are able to keep more of their money in their pocket. If we're able to do that, I think that also sends a message to the company that there's not a threat of the corporate net being raised. So, uh, you know, I think we've done a lot uh, from a tax policy perspective. I'm not sure that, that there's uh, any huge ask or, or any really big lift that needs to happen to tax policy to continue to attract uh, business to West Virginia. John? Hey, can I, oh, go ahead, Clay. Can yes. I jump real quick, I want to jump in. One of the things that they did talk about was the fact that we have a very stable and predictable tax environment. With our, our rainy day fund, it's almost 20% of our total re revenue for the state budget. <clears throat> our pensions being mostly fully funded, that was something that has been – was kind of resonated, and I, and I didn't think about that until Jason mentioned that, and I wanted to make sure we get that in. So the predictable tax environment was something that they they appreciated. Good point. Uh, Clay, that's, uh, that is what I was going to say. My three years as Deputy Secretary of Revenue – uh, and I got involved in this more than I'd been in when I was in the legislature. And that's what we ran into all the time is businesses saying, we want your tax to structure to be predictable. We don't want you to be making changes all the time. Tweak it here and there, make it a little better for us, but uh, don't have us come in there and five years later, just transform your tax structure. Clay, I want to thank you very much for your time this morning. I really appreciate you getting up early and uh, doing this for us. No problem. Thanks, Rob. Thanks, Jason. And, and thanks, John. I appreciate you guys having me anytime. You can go you, back sir. to bed now, Clay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, they'll get Clay, Clay Riley there.